Hi everyone, Christina here. Welcome back to another video at my YouTube channel. Today I'm going to be sharing with you five card related items that I really love. These are sort of my favorites or my go-tos. These are things beyond just the supplies or tools that I recommend in my usual card videos. These are things that you might add to a card or you might use when you're giving a card away. So I'm going to go ahead and get into it. I'll switch my overhead camera so you guys can see everything up close. And here we go. The first card related extra that I want to talk about is custom stamps, specifically return address stamps and also handmade by stamps. So I'm going to start with the return address stamps. This is the one that I use the most often. These are some self inking stamps that you can get at multiple different places online. Um, I got this one from Paper Source, but they actually get the whole mechanism and everything from three designing women. They're the originators of this whole little. Um, the specific self inking stamp and it has different um, like you can pull out the different designs you can get just one of these boxes and then replace the ink pads replace the stamp they're really interchangeable this is the one I have for online card classes let me find a piece of paper to stamp it for you um, it's super easy I know exactly how to line it up so it's up in that corner I've just gotten used to it and then it stamps it perfectly and over and over and over again. I've, I think I've had this stamp for, well gosh, since I moved in 2013 and I use it many times per month. So this ink pad in here has been lasting a really, really long time. These are great stamps. And there's a lot of different designs that you can choose from and customize it to whatever you want. Um, it's a really great option for a, re a return address stamp that's a custom one. Um, you can also check over at Etsy. There are a lot of calligraphers or just custom stamp makers who will make a return address for you. And in fact, one of the companies that I'm going to talk about when it comes to the handmade stamps, um, years ago, I bought a return address stamp from them, but it has my personal address on it. So I'm not going to be sharing it in this video, but it's a beautiful stamp and I highly recommend getting one from them. Before I get to that, I'm going to show you some custom stamps that I had made with designs that I've created. So these specific designs aren't available for purchase anywhere, but I did want to show you that you can come up with your own design and then have a stamp made. Um, I know there are multiple websites online that will make a custom stamp for you, like a rubber stamp. And so that's exactly what I did. A lot of like um, trophy shops, I know that kind of sounds odd, but a lot of trophy shops or your local um, shops that create trophies. They'll also create like business stamps or stamps for businesses. And that means you can also have a, a stamp made for you for your handmade cards. So don't forget to look into local businesses that might create a stamp for you. I think um, that's probably your best bet to make sure you get exactly what you want and also at a really affordable price because you won't have to pay for shipping. So um, this stamp in particular, it's on the, I put it on the back of this card. Stamps really great. Um, for backs of cards, I tend to use like a gray shade. The one I've been using recently is Versafine Smoky Gray. It's a great stamp, um, stamping ink, and it stamps really sharply and gives me a really great result. So I really like that one. And then for this stamp, this is actually a stamp that um, Jennifer and I had made for some of the guest artists that have helped with online card classes. This was years ago. We just all sent them their own little stamp and it said made by and then their name. So I just got one for me, it says made by Christina. Um, just this one has a handle, it's really fancy. And I really love this one. Um, I probably use this other one more, but this one's really fun too. All right, and then I wanna show you guys these stamps that were sent to me by a company called Fonsberg. I, I believe this company was started by two sisters and one of the sisters is a calligrapher and I've been following her for ages. Um, back in the day of, um, what was it? Google reader. She had a blog and I was constantly looking at it. And then I followed her to Instagram and then at Etsy. And, um, I ended up ordering that return address from her, but now they have a shop and they do a lot of different like wedding type items. So they're just introducing a whole line of handmade by stamps, which are really, really nice and fun. So they come with these really great red handles. And this one says handmade by Christina. And let me see if I can find the card. Here's the card. It came with a little card to show what it looks like. So I like that it's really small and unobtrusive. 
Look how cute that is, just stamped right there. Itty bitty stamp, and then you can use whatever ink you want. This is great because you can also um, stamp on the back of a dark card base and then heat emboss it or use a white stamping ink and then you'll be able to have your handmade on the back of your card. So there's that one. And they actually sent me three, and thank you so much to those guys over there. Um, this one just says, um, Christina Werner made by hand. And this is what it looks like when it's stamped out. It's beautiful, nice and simple. I really like these clean ones. I think they look great. And then I thought I would go ahead and stamp this third one, just so you can see how well it, it, it works. And this one says, crafted with love, and then some scissors, and then my name. That's not even in focus. Here we go. There's Now it's in focus. Handmade with love and then my name. So I'm just going to stamp it. I'll put it on this one as well. And they carry a bunch of different inks in their shop. Um, they have stays on specific, specifically. So I'm going to use stays on and ink this up. And I actually, actually like to hold it like this because I feel like I get a little more control over it. And then look how pretty that is. It's nice and sharp. Looks great. You're going to get that really great thin lines when you have a, a rubber stamp like this. So it looks beautiful. And then I just use a baby wipe to clean that off just in case I use a different color of ink later on. The second item I want to talk about is fun postage stamps. So you guys, if you've been following my videos for a while, you know I like to use really fun postage on a lot of my stamps. I combine vintage unused postage with current postage stamps. Um, so that's kind of my thing and I really love doing that. So I thought I'd show you, um, it's really hard. These aren't really organized very well, but or not right now anyway. But I will buy, like these are current stamps that I just ordered online that I have not un unwrapped yet. But um, just having a variety of postage stamps, like these Mr. Rogers ones. Oh, I love Mr. Rogers. If you love Mr. Rogers too, give this video a thumbs up. Let me know you love Mr. Rogers. Um, but um, look at the beautiful colors on these. And I'm a little bit of a stamp collector, but I use them as well. I don't just keep them. I love these because they have that really vintage airmail look that I love. In fact, I bought two sheets of them because of that. Anyway, so I like to go to the U.S. Postal Service website, uh, I don't know, maybe once a month or so, and just see what's new. See if there's something that catches my eye. Um, these are some forever stamps that I bought a while ago. I've got a big stack of them because I love them so much, and they only come on a sheet of six, so I got quite a few of those. And, and then I just have some little page protectors that are filled with different forever stamps. And if you're unfamiliar with it, the forever stamps in the United States, they're ones that when you buy them, you're paying for the current first class postage for one ounce. And when you buy it, it's like, as the name suggests, it's forever valid. So um, some of these in here I bought when a first class stamp was only 49 cents and now it's 50. So um, if you want to buy a bunch now, you could save money later, if that makes sense. Okay, so I just got a bunch of different ones, different colors. Um, these are so fun, all oh, these different foods. Um, anyway, so I like to mix like current postage with vintage postage. And I have a bunch of vintage postage. Let me see if I can find it here. I have just uh, this book that's specifically made for postage stamps. And I have a bunch of vintage, unused vintage stamps, which you can still use. They're still completely valid, but they're only, um, the only value as far as mailing comes is the exact number on the stamp. So this stamp is only worth 10 cents when it comes to mailing it. But if I was to go and find this specific stamp online, it might cost me 15 cents or something like that. So these are some stamps I just collected over the years. Um, the ones in this book are sorted by color, and I actually have quite a few more stamps that I've collected over the years that I need to work into this system because I do like looking through these and kind of organizing what I want on my envelope by color. So that's just, you know, just a little tip for you. If you want to do it, you can organize it by color. Um, this one is 
really lots of purples, but I ended up putting some balloons up here too. Um, and then by the time it gets near the back, see like this page is all holidays. So I've got like winter, snow stuff, a little bit of Halloween down there at the bottom. So I try to organize them as much as I can, but my collection has grown and grown and grown over the years. I haven't acquired any more vintage stamps recently, so I'm hoping that I can just organize this big pack here. It has five million stamps inside. Once I have that organized, then I'll have everything in the right spot. So don't be afraid to mix your postage stamps. In fact, a lot of people um, leave comments on my videos like, why are you putting so much postage on your envelope? You don't need that much. And I do it purely for the artistic factor. I love having a really colorful envelope that kind of matches up with the style that I've designed. The third item I want to talk about is really basic, but it's my favorite pens for writing inside of cards. So I use this pen. This is a pilot envelope addressing pen. Everything's written in here on here in Japanese, so I can't really tell what it says, but um, it's a pilot envelope addressing pen. It's the, uh, I think it's the extra fine weight. And I love this one so much. It's just a great pen. It writes on practically everything. Um, I think I've gone through about four or five of these pens over the years. I address a lot of envelopes with this pen and I also write inside the cards with a greeting to the recipient. I use this pen all the time. I really love how it writes. And when I do send a card that has a dark card base, um, I like to use a white gel pen inside. And this is the one that I've been using most recently. This is the number 10 bold pen. This is a jelly roll. And this is the most bold version that they have of this particular pen. And the only thing I want to caution you about when you use this pen is write slowly. You'll get a better line that way. And then also leave your card open and laying flat so that it can dry. Um, you know, maybe five or ten minutes, and then you can close your card and you won't have any of that ink transferred to the other side. So unfortunately, you do have to give yourself a little bit of time to write with this one. Uh, it's not for those last-minute cards that you're putting together and throwing on a gift as you walk out the door, but uh, it's what I use on dark card bases. Okay, now it is time to talk envelopes, and I've got quite a few different types of envelopes to tell you guys about and give you some different online sources for where to buy them. So the first one I want to talk about are these um, self-adhering uh, envelopes from Simon Says Stamp. They have a line of uh, envelopes there that matches their cardstock, and also they have a bunch of different colors, metallic versions or pearlescent versions of their colors. They're great. And what's great about these in particular is it has a little release paper, and it will you can close it. You don't have to lick it at all. So that's really nice. They have vellum envelopes like this, and they also have really colorful envelopes, which I really, really love. So these are from simonsystamp.com. And then available also over at Simon, but um, from a crafting company, these are some envelopes that are packaged by Studio Katya. They have A2 envelopes made out of some of the most popular card stocks for card makers. Um, this is made out of some Nina, Nina Solar White, and this is the Nina Desert Storm. So you can find these envelopes at different paper store, uh, stores online and order them from them. But um, they've packaged these down into packs of eight. So you're not buying like 50 or 100 or 200 envelopes all at once. You can get a small pack like this. So these are really great. They have a square flap if you guys can see that. And I've used them over and over again. This is the same kind of really smooth paper of your Nina Solarite. So if you're looking for a great envelope for stamping or blending, these Nina Solarite envelopes are fantastic. Okay, this is another um, envelope from a crafting company from ARC or ARC. I think they just go by ARC, but these are made out of wood and it's actual wood. They're a little bit hard to write on, like with a pen directly onto the envelope. So if you're going to be using one of these envelopes, I would recommend um, like a really thick paint pen or paint marker, or even creating a label and putting it on the envelope. These are really fun. So I wanna mention those. I've sent out a couple of those in the past. Um, Lawn Fawn has some envelopes that goes with their smaller card size that they have. Um, this is kind of like a 
Nina Desert Storm color. Really love these envelopes. They're nice and small. And I have received cards in the mail that are this size. So I think they're okay for mailing. However, in the United States, they're a little bit smaller than what they recommend. So you might want to put a little bit of extra postage on there or maybe even take it to your local post office and ask them how much postage you need for an envelope this size. Another A2 sized envelope source, or rather lots of envelope sizes, um, can be found over at Paper Source. And I really like their envelopes because they have a big triangular flap. It's really nice and formal. Big area for your return address. I really love that. And they have so many different colors of envelopes. I went on a buying spree a few years ago when they had a sale. And I bought a ton of envelopes. In fact, I'm going to show a clip here of my drawer of envelopes. This, these envelopes are mostly all uh, Simus stamp envelopes in that first column, in that first area. And then the second area, it's kind of a mixture. There's a lot from paper source. There's some from other paper stores online. I just collected envelopes over the years. So there's a lot of envelopes in there. And I love the paper source that they have a bunch of different sizes of envelopes. So I even have these vellum envelopes that fit a 5x7 card, which is A7. So there's a lot of different envelope options over at paper source. I also wanted to mention um, some kind of odd sizes of envelopes. These are actually business size envelopes. And I use these for those really, really tall cards that I make. So here's that card that has the handmade by on the back. This card fits in that envelope perfectly. So um, I ended up just going to like an office store and I found some really nice envelopes and then I can just send cards like that. And also at that office supply store, they had these fun envelopes that are made out of craft paper and they have the opening on the short end. So I thought that was like super fun just for something a little bit different. And they also had black envelopes, which, you know, you have to use a white pen or some paint or something on it, but they're really fun to send in the mail. And then these last two envelopes are crazy. Um, I posted these on Instagram not long ago or, or kind of teased them and said I'd talk about them soon. So here I am. Um, these are holographic envelopes that I have only found one source for them, and it's at a site called The Social Type. It's a pack of uh, 10 envelopes for $11, so they're definitely not cheap. And I did a little bit of testing with these to see if they would actually go through the mail. So I sent one of each to my friends that live across the country. This envelope arrived, and I'm going to show a little clip on screen. I'm going to blur out her address so you can't see, but um, this envelope arrived. It took a little bit longer than usual. Um, instead of maybe three or four days. It took about a week, maybe a week and a half. It did arrive there. You just have to remember to use like a Sharpie pen on it because these envelopes have a really slick surface. Let me show you. It's a really, real. I've got two of them here actually. A really slick surface. But I mean, how amazing is that? Like look at the rainbow on that, on that puppy. They're just magical. So it is kind of a risk mailing something that looks like this. It might not arrive or it might not arrive on time. So you might save these envelopes for ones that you're hand delivering. Or even, um, I think you could probably use this envelope, put it in a clear sleeve and put a label on the outside. That's going to ensure that it gets to where it's going. Just make sure you put your postage stamp on the outside layer too. Um, then it will get there. And then the recipient can just discard the clear sleeve and then they just have this really cool holographic em envelope. And this one, I think it was just a little bit too busy and that's why it did not arrive to its destination. Um, I think I have a picture of what this looked like before it went. But it, I think with all of those dots on there, it's just a little too hard to see. But these envelopes are super, super fun. And the last thing I want to talk about is I have a little stash of gift cards on hand. This is kind of like an extra that I put inside cards when I need to send a birthday card or a holiday card or just a thinking of you card. I like getting like little $5 or $10 gift cards from Starbucks. Um, I'm Erin Condren. I've got a lot of friends that love planning. So Erin Condren cards are good. iTunes cards. Like when I go to Target, I, they, my local Target, and I'm sure you guys, if you have a Target, you probably has this as well, but they have a huge wall of just gift cards, especially around the holidays. So I like to pick up little gift cards like this. And then of course, Amazon, because you know, everyone 
practically everyone loves Amazon. So anyway, those are the five items that are card related, but not directly card making um, that I wanted to recommend to you guys. I hope you guys enjoyed those five items that I'm loving right now and I hope you'll check them out. Links as usual are down below. You can click over and purchase these items right away. They're really fun. On screen right now, I have two more videos for you to check out if you like to. And before you go, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. And if you liked it so much that you just have to share it with a friend, you can hit that share button. I'd really appreciate it. Um, I will see you guys very soon in another video. Until then, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you guys next time.